Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I'm so glad you're watching the Frank Finch Show today. Hey. Only on MadhouseTV.com. I got to say, this is a phenomenal studio. Tom Mealy, Vicky Mealy, Tom Ma, Tommy Ma, Janine Zarelli, I applaud you. You did a great job. And I want to thank my uh, guest last time on my show, Joey Nuccio. Yes, I got it right, Joey. I could pronounce Nuccio. Thank you so much for being on my show. I hope your organization is taking off. And um, right now, I have with me special guest from the Lisa Palizzi band, Lisa Palizzi. How are you, Lisa? Hi, Frank. I'm good. Yes, tell us about yourself. Um, Where are you from? I'm from Long Island. You know, mm -hmm. Born in Patchog, so I've been here all my life. <laughs> okay. Um, been singing since I was a kid. What got you started? Elvis, actually. Elvis. My mom was a big Elvis fan and was always playing Elvis. I mean, she was playing more than Elvis, but Elvis was uh, a big influence. But what I, age? Probably as young as five. I, when I really, t I actually had Elvis posters on my wall when I was five. I had an Elvis calendar, a different you Elvis picture every month. You and you seen singers, I would watch or? documentaries, movies about him. Mm -hmm. And then you just yeah. said, I'm going to sing. Yeah. That's great. How did that, how did, from that, you know, how did you start to sing? You know, um, what was the next step you took from? I would sing in front of my house for cars going by, just out in, you know, on my front porch. <laughs> <laughs> and um, me and my nieces, we used to put together like this little girl group. Yeah, we had many names, but our last, the, the final name we decided on was the Sweethearts. We, we were, you know, three girls singing. I guess we had halfway de decent harmonies back then, but I don't remember. <laughs> no, I wouldn't expect you to. But, but I started songwriting at that age, too. At 10 years old, I wrote my first song, you know, lyrically, melodically, everything. But I never put music to it. We did everything as, you know, just three girls singing. But going to school and doing all that, how did you find the well, time to do that? On weekends. But, but that's funny you mentioned in school. I used to sing in school, too. Okay. I, would, I would just break out in song in the middle of the cafeteria. Everybody, this was like in high school. You know, now we're going way oh, ahead. Okay. Um, I, would sing, I would sing in the hallways for the hall monitors and the janitors, and I would... The nurse would have me come into her office and sing for her. <laughs> um, then when I was a teenager, I started doing um, the Sable Summer Fest. Uh, they had a, it started with a talent show that they had every year. I won it two years in a row, and then they just decided to give me my own little spot in their festival. I did, um, after that, I did the um, Holtzville Fair. I did um, a Patch Oak Festival. So I started in festivals. And then when I met you later on in adulthood, I you got into the restaurants. You still look like a teen. <laughs> I want some of those jeans. They keep you still looking young. My mom looked very young, so I thank her. <laughs> and um, did you always want to sing? Oh, yeah. I mean, when I was a real little kid, I didn't realize that singers were real people. I didn't know people in the TV were real people. You know, to me, it was just a unrealistic. But as I got older, I knew that's what I wanted to do. What kept you going? Um, my mom. Uh, she always encouraged me. Like I, I listened to an old recording of me when I was like maybe 13 or 14. And I think, oh, goodness, thank God my mom encouraged me because <laughs> hearing that, I was like, no. But I've grown. It, it just shows how much I've grown since Amen. I was a kid. Um, and I'm still growing. Like I, I recently put together my own band. But before I put together the Lisa Plizzy Band, I had been fronting several other bands for the past two years. You know, um, that started by me going into the um, open jams, mm -hmm. and that's when I got my first experience you know, singing with real musicians. And then that, that's where that took off. That's only been the last two years. And even looking back two years ago when I went to that first jam, I can see I've grown a lot. So keep growing. You keep learning. You never reach your uh, full potential. I think once you feel that you have, then your models just throw in the towel. There's, there's nowhere to go once you think you're, you, you've hit your top spot. You got to keep reaching. You keep growing, but you're not aging. Yeah. Even professionals. Mm -hmm. I, I'm one of the best singers around, you know, 
on the charts it would be Adele, I think, is one of today's best singers. I bet you she doesn't believe that she's the best she could be. And she's phenomenal to begin with. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. What's it feel like? To what, sing? To sing. To sing and just go out there. And, well, when you were, you know. I feel like a different person. You started climbing the ladder. What did it feel like back then? Um, you mean seeing things progress? Right. Um, it feels pretty good. <laughs> I think I've come a long way. You have. Um, say you have. Nominated for the singer on Long Island and Long Island Press, and you're nominated yes. in the comedian and the um, celebrity impersonator. So vote for us. As, as far <laughs> as I'm concerned, we're all winners just being nominated. That is true. It's I was not, surprised I was nominated. I mean, when you called me, and I, I thought because we kid around with each other, yeah. and you call me. You're in the Long Island press, and I'm like, what? No, I'm not. And I said, when's the joke over, Lisa? <laughs> and then I look, and I'm like, oh, I am. So somebody out there yeah. nominating me? Thank you. Yeah. What, made, what kind of music did you sing back then? When I was a kid? Yeah. Um, well, what happened was my, my mother, I've told this story so many times, she bought me a karaoke machine when I was 14 years old. And she bought me all these karaoke tracks. And I learned every song to every CD she bought me, but it was all oldies. Connie Francis, the Everly Brothers, um, Righteous Brothers, Elvis, Buddy Holly. So that's what I started singing with. Yeah. Now, client, how did, you know, progressing, you know, you get more better as you climb the ladder. Mm -hmm. And what does that feel like to you? Um, well, vocally, I don't think I, I notice it. But people come to me and say, you yeah, know, know you've, Im so. you've improved a lot. Um, some things I'll look back on, it's like, okay, yeah, I, I do do that a lot better than I did then. Um, but as far as, like, just, like, being uh, nominated for Long Island Press, Best in Long Island, stuff like that, it, it feels great. That keeps you going. <laughs> I mean, it's like, maybe it's not a big deal to some people, but to me it's like, you know, being nominated for a Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> the stage where I am. You're right. Yeah. If that's what you feel, yeah. you're right. Everybody's. But you gotta appreciate the little things. You have to. Because mm -hmm. there's no other yeah. thing about yeah. appreciating the small things. Yeah. Now tell us where you are now, you know, as far as your level with singing. Um, like what, for example? Well, just like you, you are nominated. Yeah. In the Long Island Press. Yes. Now you got there, just hard work and dedication. Now, what kind of, you know, songs do you sing? And well, with my band, we do, um, you know, classic rock and disco and current stuff. Everything. We try to cover all spectrums. I mean, people like to dance, but uh, rock is my passion. I think. No, I just started doing karaoke. I and I got to salute you and all the singers out there. That stuff is rough. Because I interview comedians, singers, and I want to feel what it's like to sing. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know how you train that voice. It's I mean, I do a few songs and I'm like tired. Yeah. How do you prepare and train? And it's just a lot of hard work and dedication. Um, I guess, but I also love it. So it doesn't seem like work. Well. But um, I do get frustrated, like when it's time to learn a new song. Some songs are easier to pick up on. I'll just pick them up like that. And other ones like, oh, my goodness, when am I going to get this down? <laughs> and then I start doubting myself. But I, I eventually get it. <laughs> that's the, yeah. that's uh, one thing we always criticize ourselves. And you mm -hmm. just let the song yeah. come to you. But, oh, that's what I want to mention. Okay. We talk about my progress. Um, I recently did some originals. Um, a friend of mine, Earl Chaos, who I met at the jams. He's written over 700 songs. And um, we went to the studio and I did seven of his originals. And they're, they're getting good reviews on like Reverb and I, I put them on some other sites. Um, YouTube, mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of good responses to him. And he's, he's a great songwriter and I, I thank him for you know, giving me those songs so I can show myself as an artist as to, you know, people will say, oh, you sing this good, you sing, but I'm singing somebody else's music this I was able to take his songs and put my take on it as if I 
it's odd because his words are as if I wrote them. So when I sing them, I am singing them as if it's coming from me. Um, but I'm also going to do an original here when I sing later. Um, but that's not by Earl. Um, Dan Welsh, who owns 89 North and Suffolk mm -hmm. Studios, right. he wrote a song and had me sing it, and I'm going to do that later. So just the fact that these people are giving me their songs to sing is, is an honor. Yes. And I want to do more. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, you always have that mic with you, you know. Yes. Um, how do you practice and prepare? I practice at home as if I were practicing, as if I were doing a gig. I actually turn on my soundboard. I hook up my, my, my speakers, and I'm sure the neighbors are being disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try not to do, I try to, you know, practice around noon. I figure everybody's either at work or they're definitely not sleeping. So I think that's the best time. And I'll, I'll practice for maybe an hour or two, depending on the day. Now, what's it like to mentally focus? You know, it's like singing and, you know, it's the whole body language and everything. Um, it's just, I just, naturally, I try not to overthink it. Because I sense you have a fantastic aura and spiritual about you. And <laughs> that's... Another reason why you're here. You yeah. gave me a shot three years ago yeah. at Sergio's. Yep. And I'll never forget yep, that. Yep, you opened for and me. And you always treat me with class. And you are a classic. Thank you. You're welcome. And, um, wow, that was off the charts. But it was good. Now, tell us where you're the leader of a band. Yep. Your band. Yep. And how is it to bring everybody up to speed? You mean as the band members? As the band members. I have to say they're, they're pretty good. Well, I've worked with all of them before. Okay. Um, my guitar player was in a, a previous band I worked with. And the bass player, I was in a band with both of them at one time. The guitar player was in, I'll say, two bands with him. And the bass player, I was in another band with. And um, we recently, um, you know, were kind of switched drummers. But uh, we, we had a really good drummer. But, he, he, you know, he's just, he's, he's uh, in another band, and it's just too much to do two bands. But he, he, was, he was great. He's one of the best drummers. Yep. <laughs> so how, do you, how does it feel with your band? Because I remember us doing gigs together at Sergio's. I yeah. love it. I mean, I loved um, the intimacy of singing in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, walking to tables and having that intimate, you, you could sit at a table with somebody and sing to them. But with the band, live musicians, they lift you, they, they drive you. There's like an energy I feed off of. It's very different. No, no, um, now, as to my band and being with other bands I've been in, um, other bands I've been in, I was told, this is the list. Mm -hmm. Learn these songs. Now I'm saying to the, the drummer and the guitar player and bass player, here's a list. Learn these songs. <laughs> this is what I want to sing. It's like passing it down. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, so I get to, but I'm very open to suggestion. Like if they say, oh, I, I really think you could do good on this song, I, hey, I'll do it. If, if you, because they have an ear. And um, if they really think, you know, I have a voice for such and such, like um, I do um, Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson. And my guitar player said, when I heard that on the radio, I, I said, you know, you gotta, you got to do that song. That, that's you. So that's one of the ones we've added. So stuff like that. How do you know what songs you're going to sing? At that a gig? Night? At a gig. How does that process work? See, I'm not a musician, so I don't know. Well, because I do different spectrums and genres, um, if it's um, a place where it's generally um, an older crowd, I will try to mostly do you know the older songs like maybe some Motown or you know the old stuff like that or 80s music if it's a dancey crowd like um, we're doing um, Eleanor's Lounge in Bohemia on December 20th that crowd likes to dance so um, we will be doing old stuff we're gonna be doing dancier type rock and doing some disco um, then we're gonna be at the Village Pub on the 28th that's in Lindenhurst and that seems to be more of a rock crowd so I'll probably do less dance, more rock. It's like, like adapting to the crowd. Yeah, like um, there's a song I, um, you know, there's like rock songs like uh, Creep by Radiohead or um, 
Paris by Grace Potter or um, Zombie by the Cranberries, that I probably wouldn't do at Eleanor's. It wouldn't be received well. But Village Pub, I think it would. Yeah, it's so. going to be the rocking Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> Dancing Lisa. Any other um, plans for the future? Um, let me see. I'm trying to think. For some reason, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know what I'll I'm forgetting. I'll pull it out. I'll try to tune <laughs> into your aura. Oh, oh. So, um, tune in. January 11th, I'm doing the Pizzazz Show at Patchogue Theater. Okay. Um, some friends of mine are in it. So because they're my friends, I, I'd rather not think of it as a competition, more of a showcase of singers on Long Island. And it's just so happy. I like to think of it as a gig for us all, but only three are going to get paid for the gig because <laughs> there's three winners. Right. Um, I was one of the winners that placed last year. Oh, and right. um, it's great. I, I, I love that stage. I, I, I did that um, Pat Oak Theater with Mickey B, his disco show, a couple years back. That, that, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. One. Yeah. And what's it like in the entertainment and the music industry? Like? Um, sometimes it can be stressful. Um, people, there's some people that will encourage you and give you constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Then there's people that will um, maybe come and say things, not, not from their end, saying so-and-so said this or whatnot. You know, so, I mean, I guess you can, but I try not to paint my mind to that because that, to me, that's hearsay. Put that wall up. Yeah. You know, don't tell me somebody said something because, you know, so, I mean, even if people are talking, that's good. That's I, good even thing. if it's bad that you're talking about me, if, if it's not positive stuff, you're talking about me and I, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> talking, you know. Um, how could anybody get a hold of you, you know, hire you or the band? Um, I do have a website, um, www.lisapalizzi.weebly.com, or you can also email me at the Echo Pearl at AOL.com. That's T H E E C H O P E A R L at AOL.com. Okay. Any, um, any more? Um, do you have any more gigs? that you didn't know about? No, um, we're doing a benefit um, January 12th. Uh, pardon me, I, I can't think of the man's name, but he's a musician who lost his home in a fire. They lost everything. And uh, we're going to be part of a benefit for them. Um, I guess check my website, because I, I forget the name of the venue, but I will be posting that on, on Reverb. I'll be posting it on Facebook. I'll be posting it on my site. OK, so you have. The, um, Eleanor's, you have the Village Pub. Patchogue Theater, and then the Benefit. And then nothing else. No, for Not now, for hoping for more. 2014 will be a better year, I think. I think so. So, as we come up to it. Um, we're going to take, take a break, sit back, relax your slacks, release your sleeves, and we'll see you in a bit. planning an event and want to include entertainment but you're not sure where to turn act one entertainment.net has provided over 1500 events with quality affordable live entertainment at private parties corporate affairs festivals bike rallies and more act one will fit into your budget they're friendly reliable and do all the legwork for you they take all major credit cards log on to act one entertainment.net for a free no obligation price quote or call 631-758-3505 for a brochure You'll be happy you did. Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash and detail center. Hot hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. Seeing it discounts all day, every day. Ladies Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird.
Fever Discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. I'm featuring Lisa Palizzi. It was an argument that nobody won. There were words said a lot more than one. There were feelings, feelings broken in two. Then we stayed up all night waiting for the light to come through. It was an argument that nobody won. Oh, through the day and the setting sun, the bags were packed and lined up by the door. Oh, anywhere you look at it, it cut me to the core. And now I know it's just like they said it would be. And now I know I don't want this. I wanna know, I wanna know when are you coming home? It was an argument that nobody won. No, and inside it will never be done. Won't you tell me how you think it began? If we knew how it started, maybe we could find the end. And now I know it's just like they said it would be. And now I know I don't want this happening to me. I want to know. There were hearts, 
hearts were broken in two And we stayed up all night Waiting for the light to come through And now I know it's just like They said it would be And now I know I told you what things happening to me I wanna know an event and want to include entertainment but you're not sure where to turn act one entertainment.net has provided over 1500 events with quality affordable live entertainment at private parties corporate affairs festivals bike rallies and more act one will fit into your budget they're friendly reliable and do all the legwork for you they take all major credit cards log on to act one entertainment.net for a free no obligation price quote or call 631-758-3505 for a brochure You'll be happy you did.